Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over a fantastic application that can be used to help get a little bit more performance out of your NVIDIA GPU. Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! Welcome back everyone. So before we get started in today's video, I just want to talk about the application that we're going to be going over. This application is called MSI Afterburner, and I believe this is only for NVIDIA GPUs. I could be wrong, and if I am, please put a comment down below and let me know if I am. This way I can correct the video. This application is going to allow us to overclock our GPU, giving us a little bit more performance while we are simming. So now that you understand what this is going to do for us, let's hop right into the video. And if the video does help you out today, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell and smash on that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Down below in the description, I will have all the links that you're going to need for the MSI Afterburner website. Once you click on the link, it'll bring you up on this page. And the first thing we need to do is to download the Afterburner program. So you're going to hit the download application. It's going to pop up in your web browser. Allow that to download, unzip the file, run the exe, and we are set to go from there. On the first time running the application, it's most likely going to look just like this does. So we're going to walk you through all the different steps here of what you should and should not do with this application, especially if you don't know what you're doing in the first place. So let's get started. Over on the left, we have a bunch of different icons, but the one that we're mainly going to be concerned with here today is the settings icon. The first thing that we're going to want to do before you touch anything in the MSI Afterburner application is to go down to the settings menu. From this menu, we're going to select a couple different things and we're going to make sure a couple different things are not checked off here. This is going to prevent you from doing anything stupid that could damage your PC. So the first thing that we want to do at the very top is make sure that you select the GPU that's on your system. If you have more than one GPU, you can also synchronize all the other GPUs to what you have here. Underneath of that, we have some other options here for the general properties. We're going to make sure that we have start with Windows is ticked and start minimize is ticked as well. Below that, we have the compatibility properties. We're going to make sure that we have enable hardware control and monitoring, enable low level IO driver, enable low level hardware access interface and restore settings after suspended mode. We're going to make sure that we do not tick the unlock voltage control, do not tick unlock voltage monitoring and do not tick force constant voltage. This is going to prevent you from accidentally changing any of the voltages to your GPU and thus could fry the GPU itself. So it's very important that we make sure these are unchecked. Below that, we have the update checking properties, and I have this set for on Startup Weekly, and this is going to check for any product updates that there may be. You can also do a manual check by hitting the Check Now button, and it will go through all of that. Once we have the General tab completed, we need to head over here to the Fan tab at the very top. Here's where we're going to be able to set a custom fan control for our GPU, as the factory fan setting is just not enough, especially when we're running a high demanding game or sim like Microsoft Flight Simulator. So the first thing that we're going to do here is make sure that we tick the enable user defined software automatic fan control. We're going to make sure that we have unticked the use firmware control mode. Below that, we also have two different settings for fan one and fan two. I'm not sure if this is going to be the same on everybody's PC, but for mine, I have two different settings. Now I'm assuming this is so that we can set two different fan curves for our fans on the GPU and not necessarily controlling individual fans on the GPU. I hope that makes sense. And if I'm wrong here, please let me know down in the comments, but that's how I feel I read this. So you can set up two different custom fan profiles for your GPU. So for me, what I'm going to do is make sure that my fan two profile is the same as my fan one profile. This way I don't have any issues. 
Now, the first thing that I like to do is to make sure that my fan speed is going to be at 100% by the time my GPU gets to about 65 degrees. So, on my Fan 2 profile, I'll take my very top, and I might have to move these over some. So I'll just take my very top dot here and move this over to 65 degrees. My lowest is going to be at 30 degrees, so I'm also going to make sure that's set. And then I can just kind of do a linear curve here, all the way up to 100. And this is going to be a little bit finicky here, but... So one thing I do want to point out here, if you do click on any part of this linear curve here, and if you're not directly on one of these dots, that's going to input a new data value here that we can select a new temperature. So if we didn't want to do that, all you need to do is highlight that dot and hit the delete button on your keyboard, and it will remove that data value. And then down here under predefined fan speed curve, you want to make sure this says custom. Below that, I just leave all of these unchecked and you are good to go. Make sure at the very bottom you hit the apply button. This way it will apply all of these settings to your MSI Afterburner. There is one more setting at the very top that you may want to change, and that is the actual user interface tab. From this tab, we can choose a different skin, so to speak, for the MSI Afterburner itself, and we can change what we want to see there. So if you don't like the way this one is laid out, you can just pick another design, as you see right here below, and you can choose that, hit apply, OK, and it will now display the new skin that you chose. OK, so now that we've gone through all the settings and configured everything properly, now let's talk about the user interface and some of the things that we need to do here. The first thing that we need to do is to come down to the fan speed, and we need to make sure that this is set up into auto mode, so that it is going to be using our custom predefined fan curve. So the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that the auto button is ticked. And you'll know that it is in the on position because the button will be lit up in the background here. Same thing under user predefined. We want to make sure that this one is also ticked in the on position. To the right of that, we have either fan one or fan two profile that we had set up in the fan controller. Now we can also select the sync fan and this is going to sync all of the fans on the GPU together. The last thing that we need to adjust here is right above the fan speed control percentage and that is this little box. This is going to either prioritize either power or temperature on the GPU. So I have that set for power, and then you wanna make sure that the linked option is also set to on. So now once we have that set up, that pretty much takes care of all the fans and to make sure that the GPU is gonna be able to cool itself properly once we do some of the overclocking. Over here on the right hand side, this is where we can actually store some of the profiles once we have everything set up here. I'll show you more on that just in a little bit. Above the fan settings here, we have some power limits and temperature limits that we can also select for the GPU. These particular settings I don't really mess with, and the main reason is if you up the power setting of your GPU, what that's gonna introduce is a lot of heat from that GPU. Thus, you better have some good cooling fans to remove all of the heat. And I'm not too convinced that upping your power limit percentage is actually going to give us that much more performance. So for these two settings, I recommend to leave them on the default at 100 and whatever your temperature limit is default for your GPU, as every GPU here is going to be different in these values. Well, at least for the temperature limit value. Now let's go over the clock and memory values for your GPU. This is where we're going to do all of the overclocking. That's going to add the performance that we're looking for. Hey, if you'd like to help out the channel further, go down below and tap on the heart icon. Your support goes a long way. So for everybody that's using a 3080 Ti or lower GPU, what I recommend to start out with for your core clock is going to be 100. So you can click on that, type 100, hit the enter button. In the memory clock, we can click there, hit 500, and hit the enter button. Now when we do that, none of these settings are actually going to take effect yet until we hit this little check mark at the very bottom of the screen. 
So when we do that, it will now change our core clock and memory clock. So now that we have that locked in, what you would want to do now is to open up Microsoft Flight Simulator and take a flight and see how it reacts. For some reason, Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't really like when I have anything over 100 on the core clock and anything over 500 doesn't really add any extra performance in my system. So one of the things that you'll notice if you do have your core clock set too high when you start Microsoft Flight Simulator, it will probably crash. Crash and burn, huh, Mav? As soon as you start up the flight or as soon as you open the application itself. If you are having this issue, then I suggest to come in to your core clock and turn it down by 50 points. If for some reason it's still crashing, then you want to come into your memory clock and turn that down by half as well. So then you would be left with a 50 core clock and a 250 memory clock. Try that out and see how that goes for you. Speaking about a 50 core clock and a 250 memory clock, if you are someone that is using a 3090 GPU, then I recommend to start with those values would be 50 on your core and 250 on the memory. And this is because a 3090 is already pretty much overclocked and you really can't add too much more to that. If you have a 3090, let me know down in the comments what your settings are if you're using MSI Afterburner. So now once you have your settings set up and you have tested it in Microsoft Flight Simulator and find that, hey, everything is working beautifully, now what we want to do is make sure that we save the profile to one of our profiles listed over here on the right. To do that, we're going to come down to the bottom and hit this little disk. And then we're just going to select whichever number here we want to save this profile to. So this gives us the added option of setting up different profiles here for different games that we may be playing. And it will automatically adjust those clock speeds for us on the GPU. One of the last things that I recommend that you do once you get everything working and it is stable at the very top of the application here, you want to make sure that you tick this apply at Windows startup. Here's a reason why you may not want to start that at the very beginning. If for some reason you tick this box to automatically start the application with Windows and you have set your core clocks way too high, what that is going to do is crash Windows. So if your core clocks are set too high or your memory is too high, you might get some pixelization and then Windows will crash on you. That's not a very big deal because once Windows starts back up, the MSI software will not be running unless you have this option ticked at the very top. You could very well get caught in a circle of crashing and restarting and crashing and restarting because every time it starts up Windows, it will automatically start the MSI afterburner and it will automatically set all of those core and memory clocks which are going to be crashing your system. And the only way I think you could get rid of that is if you entered safe mode on the next reboot and then made your changes with inside of Afterburner and then restart the system again. And that's why I did not go over this at the very beginning. So once your system is stable, Microsoft Flight Sim is running well, at that point, you can come up top here and tick the apply at Windows startup. This way, as soon as Windows starts up, it will automatically start the application and minimize it down in your Windows tray at the bottom. All right, so that's pretty much gonna wrap us up for MSI Afterburner, and that is a basic overview of the application. I know there's a lot more that you can do with this, but for right now, this is a great base to get you started. If you have any questions, post them down below in the comments section, and I will get right back to you. If you haven't done so, hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. And to all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up. We'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.